Hey guys, welcome back to the Dental Duo. My name is Nico and this is Kathleen. So today we are going over frequently asked pre-dental questions regarding applications, DAT, and other pre-dental experiences. Starting off with our first question we have, will dental schools look at your application if everything is submitted except one of your letters of recommendation? So to answer this question, if that letter is required by the school, they will not look at your application. However, if it's an extra letter from an extra person that they do not require, they'll still look at your application as long as all your letters required are in there. So for example, most schools require one dentist letter of recommendation. If that's the letter you're missing for a school that requires the dental letter, they will not consider you until that dental letter comes in. So the next question is, I am a rising fourth year undergrad and applying this cycle. My planned courses for senior year are not on my transcript. Do I still need to enter them on the ADSES portal? or should I just enter the courses I took until the end of my third year that are on my transcript? As long as you're planning on taking the courses and you follow through with that plan, you can 100% put them on the transcripts and just mark them as plans. In the application, there's a section that says what grade you got on the course and you can click on that and it says planning to take, meaning you're gonna plan to take the course in the future. However, some schools will accept you on the condition that you get a C or higher on all the courses you plan to take. They may accept you before you took biochem for example and before you received the grade for biochem but they will easily revoke your acceptance if you end up not taking biochem or getting a d or an f our next question for my transcripts if i took a course at a community college and it appears on my university transcripts as transfer credits do i include them in my transcript entry for both schools if you attended both a community college and a university you would create a transcript entry for both of those schools the courses you took in the community college would go into the community college section even if it shows up on your transcript for your university, you wouldn't put it in that transcript entry. So the next question is, how much detail should I give for the disadvantage consideration section on the application? I am a first generation college student. I am given 4,500 characters, which is the same as a personal statement. How serious is this section and do I need to elaborate extensively? So I actually wrote a disadvantage essay myself. I'm a first generation Hispanic student as well. I had to work multiple jobs to help my family. So I wrote about this extensively. My disadvantage statement ended up being around 3000 characters. So you don't need to hit that 4,500 character count. Make sure you specify all the disadvantages you went through. Also, don't make it a sob story. Even if you went through some hardships, still come back strong and talk about how these hardships really made you still want to pursue dentistry. Yeah, definitely don't make it a sob story at the end of the day you're still applying to dental school you still manage to get through it your gpa is good enough your dat is good enough your experiences are good enough to apply to dental school so you definitely conquered all those disadvantages so don't make it a sob story just show how you had disadvantages but you still persevered past them all righty our next question would i be at a disadvantage if i spoke about an orthodontist doctor rather than a general dentist in my personal statement i worked at an orthodontist office and so i had more experience in the field rather than general dentistry but i'm not sure if i would be at a disadvantage if i talked about that any suggestions so no you would not be at a disadvantage if you had more meaningful and impactful experiences with, with an orthodontist sure go ahead you can talk about it just make sure that you're not focusing on orthodontics only don't really go down that path always just trace it back to just why general dentistry and why dentistry as a whole yeah, and don't forget to take a look at our personal statement video. We're going to link it above where we talked about specifics on how to write your personal statement. Next question is, where can I find my science GPA on the application? Do I have to submit it before I can see what it is? So that's a phenomenal question. Unfortunately, it's very difficult to calculate your science GPA because there's some classes that might factor into it, some classes that might not, and it's a gray area. Personally, what I did, which worked out perfect, my academic advisor actually had access to my science GPA. So she was able to provide me my science GPA. But in the event your academic advisor does not have access to this, you would have to submit all your grades and wait for your transcripts to be processed. And there you'll be able to 
what's your science GPA? You could make a rough estimate of what your science GPA is, but again, it may not be completely accurate because we don't really know what classes count as science according to ADSAS. However, once you submit your application with all of your transcripts, you'll receive a copy of your verified transcript. So that case, you would just wait until your application is verified and there will actually be a part where it'll show you your specific overall and science GPA. Alrighty, our next question. Can someone explain core science professors for letters or recommendations? I'm trying to be so cautious with this application because I don't want to mess anything up. Would a professor I had for microbiology and human genetics be a core science? or a biochem professor? So yes, biochem, genetics, and microbiology would be a core science professor. Any class that falls under the category of biology, chemistry, or physics would count as a science professor. However, some people consider math and engineering to be a science, but in this case, it would not be. Only biochem and physics. Some people might have questions if a science lab instructor might count as a science professor. It will. However, try to stick with the actual professors of the lecture because those would be stronger people to ask. Keep in mind, generally, the lab professor or TA should have their PhD to write that letter for you. For more information on letters or recommendation, check out Kathleen's video above. Next question. When choosing REACH schools to apply to, any recommendation on how large of a GPA gap is reasonable to try for? For example, if a school's average matriculant science GPA is 3.6 is a 3.4 science GPA within reasonable range. And would a DAT score like a 23 be sufficient in closing that gap? So a 3.4 science GPA would be okay for a school with an average 3.6. I'd say a reasonable range would be 0.3. Just keep in mind that the school's averages DAT and GPAs are just an average. There's people well above that average and well below that average. So in the event that you have a low DAT score, but you have a GPA that matches the school's averages, maybe that might work and you can probably still manage to get an interview. In my case, I applied to Penn, which was kind of a reach school for me. With my DAT score, I was on the lower end of their average DATs, but my GPA and the rest of my application did make me stand out. So although I had the lower DAT score, the rest of my application still pulled me through. So it's really just up to you and how strong you think your application is and what schools you feel confident applying to. For a good resource, DAT Booster has a breakdown of every dental school stats you can see the lower five percent of the student stats that are enrolled in the program as well as the upper 95th percentile stats of the students enrolled so you can see what range they're accepting and the next question is if i started a volunteer experience before college but continued into college can I put the actual date I started or do I need to just put the start date as during my undergrad on the experiences section? So if you started an experience in high school, you can definitely put that high school start date. Just make sure in the description section that you're talking about your duties and responsibilities during college. But yes, you can definitely start since high school like that they see that you were doing the experience for an extended amount of time. Alrighty, our next question, can you submit the application without having the DAT score? So this is a very common question. You can submit your application without your DAT score. Keep in mind, schools will probably put your application aside and wait for that DAT score to come in before they make any decisions on your application. I have seen instances where schools will put you to the side until that DAT score comes in and they forget about you. So keep that in mind because the last thing you want is for you not to be considered and and put to the side waiting for that DAT score indefinitely. Our next question, what are some good questions to ask when shadowing? So you can start with just building a report with your dentist and asking them maybe what dental school they went to and if they ever considered any specialties. As far as when you're shadowing a procedure, kind of read the room and if the patient's not feeling very comfortable, then maybe don't start asking a ton of questions or if the dentist looks kind of stressed, don't ask questions. Maybe wait until the patient has left the room and then you can ask the dentist questions. If he's really friendly and willing to to talk to you during the procedure, you can ask him exactly what procedure he's doing, what's the tooth that he's working on, and what instruments he might be using. Or she. Or she. There is... Okay, whatever. <laughs> <laughs> he, she, I don't know why I said he. All right, so this next question is a little bit specific, but some people might need help with it. So let's talk about the names of the schools that don't require two science professors for letters of rank. 
So starting off, I know UF and Nova do not require two science letters or recommendations. Other schools include Iowa, UCLA, Tennessee, UCSF. However, keep in mind, most of these schools that I named are not very out-of-state friendly. So make sure if you're applying to them, you have the impressive stats or you're in-state. Now we have a DT question. How can I ask Bootcamp to give me an extension of my membership? Would I have to pay? So that's pretty easy to ask. You just go to your messages and talk to a study expert and just explain your situation and they will be more than happy to help you out with a reasonable extension for your subscription. Speaking of DAT Bootcamp, feel free to use our dental code DENTALDUO10 to get 10% off your DAT Bootcamp subscription. And also watch this video that Nico made detailing how he got a 99th percentile DAT score. Good plug. <laughs> Next question is pretty short. Do I waive my right to access my letters or recommendations? Yes, you do want to waive your right to access a letter of recommendation. This is just stating that you will not look at this letter and you did not have access to it. So the next question is, do you think applying in September or October is too late? Personally, I would recommend against it. You're kind of diminishing your chances the longer you wait. You have the best chance of getting into dental school the earlier you apply because a lot of schools do accept you first come first serve base. So unless you're okay with getting post December interviews and maybe accepted off the wait list in May, June, July, which is kind of stressful, having to find roommates at that time and a lease and maybe moving to a new city is very difficult to do. I'd say for the best chances no later than like early to mid august the next question what should i say for the covid essay the only thing i can think of is it was harder to obtain shadowing hours okay so for the covid essay this is your chance to talk about any limitations you may have had during the pandemic whether that was a bad grade or a shadowing experience if you don't really have too many limitations, feel free to keep it short. You don't really have to reach the word count for this. It's just your chance to kind of vouch for a bad grade or a gap in your shadowing hours or whatever the case may be. So just put whatever you feel is necessary. Don't overdo it or underdo it. Okay, the next question. For letters of recommendation, can their signature be just their name printed or does it have to be an actual signature? So their signature has to be an actual signature. It just can't be their name written out. Also, make sure your letters have a letterhead as well as a date as some schools will not accept a letter that doesn't have the letterhead, date, and signature. And the next question is, I'm getting ready to start studying for the DAT next month. I am a recent grad and I'm taking a gap year. So my timeline to the DAT is very flexible. I was wondering, should I study three months or should I do six months? I would strongly suggest not taking six months to study for your DAT. And the reasoning behind that, even three months, I feel like towards the end of your studying, you're going to start to forget about the first initial things you covered. And it's going to kind of make your life more difficult because now you're going to have to go back to those sections, review them, but also review everything else. Six months is even worse. I personally studied for my DAT in eight weeks. That's also a little bit on the shorter end 10 weeks i would say is a perfect amount two and a half months you'll be more than ready to take your test so yeah i agree with nico it's better to study three months heavily and consistently than six months spaced out Alrighty, our next question i have a dental x-ray certificate and infection control certificate where can i put this in my application so these certificates can go under licenses a section in the supporting information part of the application in this section you would just upload a pdf of these certificates as well as the date they were issued. And Kathleen actually made a video navigating through the ASDAS portal. She went over every section extensively, so I suggest you check it out. I'm going to link it above. For our last question, this is kind of scenario based, but hi everyone. I'm working on reapplying this year after being waitlisted by my top two choices, and I'm reevaluating who to get letters of rec from and wanted to know if it would be acceptable to have a retired dentist write me a letter of recommendation. So in this case, this retired dentist still has a DDS or DMD degree, so he is still a dentist. As long as you had experiences shadowing him or working with him while he was still an active dentist, it should be totally fine to get this letter. With that being said, if you guys have any additional questions, leave them in the comment section. Maybe we make a part two of this video answering some of your guys' questions. Feel free to shoot any questions at us. We'll be more than happy to answer them and if we don't know the answer we will definitely do our research to find the answer for you guys as always make sure you like and subscribe to stay tuned with our videos very soon we will be making our day in the life videos once we start dental school as well as other videos related to dental school so definitely stick around to check those out